I went to a place uh, called Biddy Biddy, which is the largest refugee camp on the planet. Uh, it opened last uh, February, I think, and it was completely full, 300,000 people by May by the time I got there. The interesting thing about, about this is uh, it sounds like doom and gloom. They actually have a solution here for this. Yes. And the Ugandan government, and I would have a few problems with, with many of their policies, their human rights stuff and that, but however, they have one of the most progressive uh, human rights policies on the planet. They have an open-door policy, and they, they'll take anybody in. They give them land. So it's a resettlement thing. Uh, and what they need to do that, it's, it's a poor country, is they need funding. So uh, the UN, since the 1st of February, is up for about a billion and a half. Now, it sounds like a huge amount of money, but from the world, it's not a huge amount of money. Uh, and that problem, uh, for the moment, until the war is over there, would go away. Now, the problem is, if that money is not forthcoming, if you think about this logically, we've all seen the inflatables in, in uh, mm. uh, you know, the Mediterranean. Mm. In South Sudan, you've got Sudan, you've got Libya, then the Med. Now, if those people aren't looked after, if we're not looking after them with this meagre, relatively meagre amount of money, there's every possibility they're, they're trying to look after their families. And they're and on a dinghy. And, yeah, and we've seen what that's like. Yeah, I mean, so we need some joined-up thinking here. The, the footage of the dinghy, as we've shown it here, yeah. uh, with the, the Irish Navy rescuing people in mm. the water. Fantastic and work it, those lads are doing. No doubt about it. Well. But it does show, you see it at, at a very raw level from refugees' point of view, mm. it does show... You, how desperate you must be if you're going to put the most people you love most in the world onto that thing. Um, um, and they don't, they, they, most of them have never set foot in, you know, yeah. they, they can't but swim, they, all they seem can't to, do they, anything. They also, they're, they're paying these Huge amounts of money. To, to creatures yeah. who are exploiting them. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and well, all part in Libya now, since, since it was right. destroyed by the West, I mean, there's slave markets going on there. Right. It's medieval at the moment. We, we have, uh, we're a bit self-congratulatory on this, but tell me mm. from your experience, am I right in saying that we have a, a good... A track record when it comes to foreign aid in this regard. And yeah, yeah, most definitely. And I, I often have wonder, is there's not too much to say, that there's still this sort of sense that the famine and the, the, the sense of, of, of a, an understanding we might have at it's, a base It's level. an understanding that we better not forget. Well, look, that's, that's the most important thing. And the last time I was on, a uh, million and a half people during the famine were taken in, right. mainly by North America. We were refugees. Uh, and for us, we are now in a position that we need to return the favour. Now, I'm not saying we take in a million and a half, but we sure. take our fair share. We don't make it difficult. We need to get rid of direct provision and allow people to work properly, allow people to work there yeah. here.